The USS Kronk and the USS Crittenden are both trying to move an iceberg. And so we're going to try to figure out what direction that iceberg moves under the amount of force that these two boats are applying to that iceberg. So that's this problem. The first thing that we need to do is figure out uh, relative to our coordinate system uh, what our components are of the resultant that happens because of these two forces that the boats put on the iceberg. Okay, so the first thing I'll do here is just establish that instead of we're going to be uh, north, east, west, south kind of a coordinate system, let me just call these uh, x and y because that's what we are used to seeing. So I'll, I'll call those x and y. Next, what we want to do is evaluate all the different uh, applied forces that create uh, x components and sum those all up into something that I will call r sub x being the x component of the resultant. Okay. Um, so as I look at this, the forces that we have here, we have one coming from the USS Crittenden that goes like this, and we have one coming from the USS Kronk that goes like this. Uh, the one from the Crittenden is the only one that actually has uh, an X component, and that starts out being a three-ton force that we see over here, whereas the USS Kronk is a two-ton force that we see going up in that way. So to figure out that X component from the USS Crittenden, we would have three tons times uh, this 40 degrees is measured relative to a horizontal axis. The component we're trying to get is the one that's adjacent relative to that angle, and so I need to use a cosine function there. So cosine of 40 degrees. Okay, and uh, so what we do here is we, we enter that three times the cosine of 40. That ends up giving me 2.298 okay, tons. All right, next we want to figure out, because that's the only component we have in the x direction that you see applied to this iceberg. Next we want to do this in the y. In the y direction, we have both the Crittenden as well as the Kronk. Uh, and so we have three tons times, we want the opposite component now. So we take the sine of 40 degrees. Okay, but then we need to add on the effect of the USS Kronk, which is just going to be two tons, which are applied entirely in that y direction. So what I see there is that I will have three times the sine of 40 degrees plus just two tons. Okay, and that ends up giving me 3.928 tons that act uh, there in the upward direction. Now here comes really the only uh, kind of tricky part of this problem. You'll notice that the angle that it asks for here is relative to the uh, vertical direction there. That's kind of a non-standard way of expressing that angle. But it's not really that big a problem. We just need to go back and remember our Soka Toa. In the case of Toa, okay, what we will see here is that the tangent of theta is going to be equal to opposite over adjacent. In this case, the opposite angle to where theta is measured is the x direction. And so this tells us this is our x. Um, and then we would have the y direction being the adjacent. Okay, And this ratio is opposite of what you may have memorized out of certain notes that were given. And that's OK. What we're doing is we're going back to the basic trig uh, to make sure that we understand this. So what I'll say here then is that the theta that we calculate should be equal to the inverse tangent of Rx over Ry, where Rx is 2.298 tons over 3.928 tons. Okay, so what I'll do here is do that inverse tangent 2.298 divided by 
8928. And that gives me 30.3 or so degrees. Okay, so we go back over here and look in the answers. 30.3 degrees is one of them, and that is the answer. I hope this has been useful. If it has, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. Appreciate it.